Greetings LEGO fans! For this week's release, I'm looking forward to expanding my LEGO City with the Corner Garage. This is kit number 10264, 2,569 pieces, and should be a fun little addition to the city with, of course, the garage on the main floor. Looks like we got a vet on the second floor, someone living on the third floor, and some kind of rooftop terrace, and that all just seems pretty awesome to me, and I'm definitely looking forward to building it. But, of course, before any of that, let's get this unboxed so we can get this all started. The Corner Garage, another great addition from LEGO for those who are looking to build a LEGO city. This three-story structure is well equipped for many scenes to be set up, with the main floor having a garage, with gas station, a tow truck, and a customer with a little scooter, second floor having a vet with a waiting room, third floor, bachelor pad, and rooftop terrace, there's a lot to be set up in here. Starting just above street level, we find this is Joe's Garage, by accident we meet. And if you are in need of Joe's services, just over to the right. Is the little sign indicating this is the entrance to the garage. Over on the left side, there's a little knob which you can rotate to raise and lower the clear garage door. Over in the front, we've got the little gas pump, a little lever on the side for turning it off and on. The hose on the right side is flexible so you can carry it over to your cart for fueling of course. And right in front, we've got a little bucket which has a squeegee inside. Just behind that, we've got some window displays where you can see a tire for viewing, some cylinders stacked up which I'm going to guess is motor oil, 
Over on the right hand side, clip to the wall, we've got a broom. And right next to that, a little dolly. Some rims tacked to the wall. And moving to the left of all that, we've got the entrance to the gas station and another door to access the upper units. On the inside, we can see this is a pretty tightly packed scene. With the garage taking up most of the space, a little retail counter, and the access to the second floor. Over by the two doors, you can actually see that you can access the stairs from either entrance. So I'm not really sure why they did two doors, but hey, why not? Just in front of that, we've got the counter with a cash register and a hundred dollar bill sitting on it. Over in the corner, we've got a tool chest all loaded up. Here we've got Joe, presumably, balancing a car tire with his German Shepherd right next to him. And just behind that, we have the lift, which is operated by sliding this little mechanism in, in the back corner of the building. Ideally, Joe would like this lift to not be empty. And to get his customers into the shop, he has this little tow truck. Pretty cute with his two-tone blue paint job and retro styling. I think this truck has actually been around for a while and Joe has been in this game for a long time. The lift mechanism is easy to raise and lower with a simple little worm gear, which is great because it holds in place even when you let go. So when you do need to hook onto a car, like this broken down pink convertible that President Business is having a little trouble with, it's a breeze. All you have to do is back up, hook on, twist the knob to raise the mechanism and drive away. Once the lift is loaded with the vehicle, it actually doesn't operate quite as smoothly as it did before. It takes a good amount more effort to slide the mechanisms in to raise the lift. Not too much, but it is a noticeable amount more. And when you pull it back, the lift doesn't fall on its own. I find the easiest way to make it go down is to just barely touch the mechanism on the side of the building and it just falls down on its own. But once you have these buildings sandwiched together with another one, it's not gonna be accessible. So at that point, if you just grab the car a little bit, take a little bit of weight off the mechanism, the lift does come right back down. But that's of course not ideal. All in all, I think this is going to be more for a setup than actual play, so I don't see it going up and down that much. So ultimately, it's not a big deal, even though I would have liked it to have been a little bit smoother. On the second floor, above Joe's garage, we have Dr. Jones's Animal Care. No snakes allowed. This floor is broken down into two sections. The waiting room, which has a stair access and a balcony door, and the vet's office. Starting in the waiting room, over by the window, we've got a parrot. No customer here, so I'm guessing he lives here. And a little potted plant with some flowers on it. Very cute. Over on the other side of the room, we've got a couch, a love seat, a little map up on the wall of a park with a heart-shaped pine, also very cute. And in the wall, we have an aquarium with a goldfish or some other redfish, looking very snug in an aquarium that's clearly too small for it. Maybe the fish is actually dead, which would explain why in the instructions, it shows to install it upside down. Making our way into the examination room, the first thing we find right next to the door is a chart. I have no idea what this is about. That's right next to the aquarium that we saw on the other side, which is pleasantly placed right next to the desk. Set up with an old school multi-hinge lamp. I think Dr. Jones has also been around for a while. Today's mail and the Lego news featuring a story about the greatest hero ever. Next up, we have the amphibian station with a little enclosure for the frog and a heat lamp right above, keeping him nice and toasty warm. And just over next to that, we have our vet who's examining this cute little bunny that this adorable little girl has brought in to be examined. And finally, over in the other corner, we have the microscope with some of his tools, scissors, and a syringe clamped down right next to it. Up on the third floor, this studio slash bachelor pad has almost everything that a minifigure needs to survive. The first thing that I see is missing is a door. The stairs are easily accessible. So anyone who has access to either the gas station or the vet can easily just walk into this guy's apartment unannounced. Over by the stairs, there's a big comfy couch, which is right next to the kitchen equipped some utensils on the wall, a clock, counter space, a bowl underneath, the oven having a little pan on top, and some cookies baking within, a sink for washing up, but no fridge. Off in the corner, there's a tiny closet. Well, actually, it's the washroom, or maybe just the toilet, not even room for a shower, so pretty basic. And just to the right of that, we've got a rock and roll poster, a toy truck up on the wall, and a very basic single bed. And turning it around to in front of the windows, we have a TV, a very important part of the bachelor pad. And making our way up the last set of stairs, we come to the roof, where if our bachelor really needs, the extra jack can get some privacy up here because these doors do close. Set up with a nice relaxing chair and parasol so we can relax in the sun. A very basic but cute little garden offer in the corner. This is a great little escape. And now to the minifigures, where we have our scooter driver, old Doc Jones, our bachelor pad tenant, Joe, who's wearing a hat of the same style that I remember seeing on the minifigures when I was a kid, giving further credence that he's been around for a while. Another mechanic, this one with a greasy face, so I think she does most of the work. And this little girl, all very generic minifigures, but of course, very much welcomed when creating a Lego city. 
With that all covered, my conclusion, which I'm sure is not going to come as any surprise, I really like this kit. I have a feeling that the majority of people that would buy the set are looking to expand their LEGO city. And for that purpose, this is a great addition. The building has a great level of detail, both interior and exterior, a lot of minifigures to set up scenes, and of course, a lot of options to customize it so you can make your own stories and adventures throughout, which combines both play and display into one great activity that both score very highly. And as for its parts, this kit is just okay. There's of course a lot of pieces here, but there's nothing overtly special, nothing that really stands out. Uh, a lot of smaller pieces, not a whole lot of big pieces, other than the base plate of course. So, like all LEGO, there's a huge amount of potential for reusing it, but I don't find there's anything particular in here that really grabs me as I would buy this kit because I want to reuse that. But if my theory is true, and you've bought this kit, you're probably building a LEGO city, and taking it apart is not on your mind, because this is the kind of set you only really want to expand upon, and I'm most definitely looking forward to doing more of that.